We're here in beautiful Redondo Beach, California, enjoying a wonderful sunrise, experiencing happiness. And speaking of which, the conversation that we recorded yesterday during sunset was about happiness. And so today we're discussing happiness and that happiness is your true way of being. Wherever you are, be it sunrise, sunset, morning, afternoon, wherever you are in the world, that is where you are and thus where happiness is. So watch this video all the way till the end as we discuss happiness in a way that we've never articulated before. And I trust that you'll enjoy and benefit greatly from today's conversation. Enjoy. I titled today's Neville Goddard Conversation Mind Map, Always Go to the End. And I put in brackets, the being I am. The premise of our conversation is this quote here from his book, Feeling is the Secret. I actually pulled together a number of quotes from his book, Feeling is the Secret, to articulate a point about happiness. He says, Therefore, the one who does not control his feeling may easily impress the subconscious with undesirable states. By control of feeling is not meant restraint or suppression of your feeling, but rather the disciplining of self to imagine and entertain only such feeling as contributes to your happiness. Now, why I would like to focus on happiness today and also I titled today's conversation Mind Map, Always Go to the End, The Being I Am, is a number of inspirations. So number one is I'm actually in California right now and I'm here for the week and I purposefully decided to record this video Saturday evening. I landed a number of hours ago and I chose to record this video Saturday evening right at sunset. So I'm looking right out of my window right now of the place that I'm staying and I could see Redondo Beach. And there's a wonderful, beautiful sunset happening right in front of me right now. In 2016, 17, 18, 17 and 18 primarily, I had a TN visa and I was here most of the time. And one of my experiences of happiness was during my morning runs when I would run in Redondo Beach and I would listen to Earl Nightingale's Strangest Secret. It is what I would call a symbolic manifestation of happiness. Now, happiness is our true way of being. Who we are is happiness. And so who also inspired today's conversation was Ramana Maharshi. Actually, on my flight here, I was listening to the audiobook of Who Am I? And Ramana Maharshi dedicated his life to asking the question, Who am I? And he has wonderful insights. I recommend checking out his work. The last few years, I started to get more into his work, and he had said so many wonderful things. And they resulted in deep spiritual experiences and realizations. He's one of the reasons why I say, and I've been saying it a lot more lately, you are happiness, love, peace, bliss, fulfillment. That is who you are. And thus I titled the mind map, always go to the end, the being I am. I like how Neville said it as well, to imagine and entertain only such feeling as contributes to your happiness. Now, I had this interesting experience, I think it was last year, where I was watching a video on Ramana Maharshi, and they were reading some of his information, and there was a picture of him on the screen. And while I was listening, I started to release identification to a degree that I've never done before. And we talk about how, in mind there could be all these beliefs and 
these beliefs spawn out thoughts. Thoughts of, let's say, unhappiness. Thoughts that, if one identifies with, can generate physical experiences, emotional responses, and further thought and belief identification related to those thoughts. So, as we release identification to the beliefs that generate those thoughts, mind is purified. And so, Ramana Maharshi taught, by being as you are, thoughts may arise and disappear without identifying with them. And this is mind purified. So, I remember watching this video and listening to some of the things they were saying about him and some of the things that he said, I released identification to such a degree where it appeared that his image, he was sitting down, was actually coming out of the screen. It looked like a 3D movie. The stuff that was said was so deep and profound. I'll actually link in the description to the video that I'm referring to. Now, I started to have more profound experiences of the feeling regardless of appearances. What I mean by that is if I ask someone what brings you happiness, they may point to a visible appearance. For example, right now, I could say watching the sunset brings me happiness. Or going for a run in the morning brings me happiness. Watching the surfers after a run brings me happiness. And certainly, we experience happiness doing the things where we experience happiness. But what about if those things are not apparent right now? We don't have access to them right now. Could we capture the feeling of happiness right now, regardless of appearances. In the earlier stages for me, this was challenging because I needed a condition. So happiness, if name whatever kind of external appearance or experience. And there were moments, however, where I experienced unconditional happiness, spontaneous happiness, This increased more so as I began to realize the true nature of self, the true self being happiness. And what Neville is speaking of here is by capturing that feeling, regardless of appearances, happiness, sure enough, it manifests as thoughts of happiness emotional relatability to experience, which we can call happiness, and happiness-based behaviors, as well as outer expressions of life, such as this beautiful sunset here, which is a manifestation of being happiness. When I began to accept happiness regardless of appearances or regardless of conditions, Like we talked about in a recent video where Neville spoke of the feeling, isn't it wonderful? Suspend judgment as to what wonderful looks like. And he said, he promises it will include all the little things. Just capturing that feeling of being now wonderful. Happiness. Peace. Love. And so, related to Ramana Maharshi, I noticed that this truly is experienced by being still and knowing that I am. If the individual remains still, sure enough, emotions that one could say were, you can name them whatever you'd like. I personally don't label emotions as negative, but let's just say, if someone said they were experiencing negative emotions, they clear up. The same is to be said about thoughts. Thoughts clear up. Emotions release. And what is left is the true nature of self, happiness. 
and abiding as that, being as you are, you start to experience that more so in and as the outer expressions of life, in your relationships, in your friendships, in the wonderful experiences in life. It starts to appear more so, manifest more so, because you are dwelling in that feeling of being that I am. Neville says, What you do not want done unto you, do not feel that it is done unto you or another. This is the whole law of a full and happy life. Everything else is commentary. This is another realization by abiding as I am. Stillness. You experience love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. And you realize that you share that experience with everyone. Consciousness is one, and thus we all share that experience of being. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. And so how this continued to play out for me and increases more so and I've been also having this conversation with different people who've also been reporting this to me, is that they're noticing that they automatically imagine others lovingly, peacefully, happily, blissfully, fulfilled, automatically. As well as I started to notice, and they started to report to me that they were noticing this as well, they would experience happiness more so wherever they are, regardless of condition or appearances, because they realize that they are inwardly relating to experience and appearance, and thus happiness is sourced from within. Now, the individual may have conditions, the I associated to belief, we can call those conditions. If I am seeing this sunset, which is a beautiful sunset, if you could see it right now, it's pink skies, then I'm happy. But let's say I ran a number of errands and took care of a number of things, and let's say the schedule didn't coordinate that I would time it so that I could have this conversation with you while looking at the sunset would I still experience happiness? Well, when you realize that you are happiness, you experience happiness, for my example would be, I experience happiness having this conversation with you while there's a beautiful sunset in the background. And if there wasn't a sunset in the background, I would still experience happiness during this conversation with you. As mentioned, this wouldn't have been the case before because I would have put a condition on it. The condition would be if we do the video while there's a beautiful sunset in the background, then I will allow myself to experience happiness. Yet if the backdrop didn't have a beautiful pink and purple sky with sunset, then I wouldn't be happy. Those are all conditions. And so he says, Consciousness is the one and only reality, not figuratively, but actually. This reality may for the sake of clarity be likened unto a stream which is divided into two parts, the conscious and the subconscious. In order to intelligently operate the law of consciousness, it is necessary to understand the relationship between the conscious and and the subconscious. The conscious generates ideas and impresses these ideas on the subconscious. The subconscious receives the ideas and gives form and expression to them. Ideas are impressed on the subconscious through the medium of feeling. This is powerful. If the individual can capture the feeling of of I am, being, happiness, 
The individual that appears realizes experientially I and the Father are one and experiences in that moment the feeling of happiness being who they are. True self-acceptance, which results in true self-expression. Manifesting as the outer appearances of life that we call happiness-based. So we know what happiness means to us. By capturing the feeling of being happiness now, it automatically manifests as the outer expressions of life that when we experience those or see those expressions, we say, that's happiness, that's happiness. Like we spoke about when it comes to, isn't it wonderful? You see the outer experiences and expressions of life and say, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. He says, ideas are impressed on the subconscious through the medium of feeling. Think feelingly only of the state you desire to realize. And I say, go all the way till the end. Accept yourself the way you are. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. He says, feeling the reality of the state sought, that is what we truly desire, to be as we are. The state truly sought, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Capture the feeling of being and allow that to manifest as the wonderful experiences of life to reflect that. Wonderful, harmonious relationships, business, etc. Now, when I speak about my experiences over the years on this channel, I set goals, visions, definite chief aims, and those are what I would consider to be symbols of happiness. Because we know in our heart what we consider to be happiness based symbols. We know what they are goals, visions. And if one does not know what they look like in their imagination, that's fine. By capturing the feeling of that, regardless of what it looks like, it certainly does manifest as outer expressions of life that we call happiness. So these days, more so than ever before, flow, being in flow, I experience happiness. Sure enough, manifests as outer expressions of life that I would call happiness, pleasant surprises as well as those intentional symbols of what I imagine happiness implies. And they all spring from the feeling of the being you are, who you truly are, beyond identification to beliefs is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. By going to the end and capturing that feeling, by being still, this is the way that I found to be the most direct path to that feeling. Exactly like Ramana Maharshi said it, by being still. And it also says it in the Bible. Notice this, by being still, mind is purified. Emotions are allowed to be. Thoughts are allowed to be. The outer appearances of life are allowed to be. Exactly like how he said in the beginning here, by control of feeling, It is not meant restraint or suppression. Full self-acceptance, true self-acceptance by being still. Happiness. Remain in that feeling. Because, as he says, all changes of expression are brought about through a change of feeling. A change of feeling is a change of destiny. All creation occurs in the domain of the subconscious. So, by feeling, it is meant that reality is that way. I am that. Happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. I am that. Regardless of appearances. Regardless of interpretation. I am that. And for me, as mentioned, I experienced this more so as I continue to apply this information. This wasn't an occurrence to this degree of frequency that it is now. In the earlier stages, when I discovered this information in 2004 with Thinking Grow Rich, 
And I believe it's because, as I always say in the videos, throughout the journey of applying this information, mind became purified. So automatically, like Ramana Maharshi says, I don't go looking for external conditions. I remain the same regardless if the conditions or the appearances or whatever changes externally. Easier and more so each day through this practice. He says, to impress the subconscious with the desirable state, you must assume the feeling that will be yours had you already realized your wish. By defining your objective, you must be concerned only with the objective itself. The manner of expression or the difficulties involved are not to be concerned by you. So I like how he says that because as we accept the feeling, capture the feeling of being happiness, there's no concern as to the manner of the expressions or difficulties because there's no identification to the appearances. And more accurately put, there's no identification to beliefs. You have transcended the beliefs. You transcended the beliefs in the moment through that stillness and acceptance of happiness. And sure enough, some way, somehow, it manifests as the expressions. And so they're not to be concerned by you, means the individual self that appears is an appearance and thus God does everything, as stated in the Bible. I can of myself do nothing. The Father within doeth the work. And so I say a lot, having a vision or a definite chief aim or knowing what you want precisely is a way of actualizing that feeling, actualizing the symbolic representations of that feeling. Yet one could do it without those conditions. They could simply be as they are capture that feeling of authentic being, true self-acceptance, and abide as that. And sure enough, it manifests as wonderful experiences in life in increasing frequency on a continuous basis. So what is the feeling of truth? Capture that feeling of I am, happiness, being as you are now. Stillness is the way. And why do I say from my experience that stillness is the way? Because by being still, you automatically release the identification to the thoughts. You automatically release the emotions. And thus, you allow the thoughts to be. You allow the emotions to be. You allow the world to be. And as we always say, this disentangles our mind from the evidence of our senses. And by being as I am, we automatically experience being I am, happiness in the moment. So this is helpful in relation to whatever goal or vision that you have and also in relation to any appearance that arises where the individual becomes reactive to the appearance or the experience, they can in that moment be still and release that identification. And then what they find, you're able to experience this happiness in circumstances where one might have thought it was not possible to do so. It is amazing how powerful this is, what we're talking about today, when we apply this as a way of life. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, happiness is my true nature. Happiness is the being I am. By being as I am, still, happiness naturally arises to manifest being happiness in and as the outer expressions of life more and more so each day, in increasing frequency on a continuous basis. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.